Well, the the um, uh, truth is that that, that I, I, when the um, prize was uh, announced on the morning of Tuesday, the eighth of December, I wasn't at home, and that was deliberate. I wasn't trying to avoid the, the uh, people from the uh, Nobel Foundation or the Academy, but uh, but I was trying to avoid media attention, which I expected would follow very rapidly. So I, I made sure to go out at 11 in the morning w with the expectation that the announcement would be maybe 11.30 or something like that. And uh, I also went down to the harbour area of Edinburgh for a, a lunch, uh, went to an art exhibition and came back home at about three o'clock. And I was told the news first by a former neighbour who uh, stopped her car, which overtook me as I was walking home, and came across the street and said, congratulations, my daughter phoned me from London to tell me about the award. And I said, what award? <laughs> She gave me the answer I expected, so I then w went home and read and listened to my phone messages. For a 13, 14 year old, uh, uh, it, it's, it's a little bit difficult to, to say. It. I mean, the, the answer I give to that question uh, depends very much on, on the uh, knowledge which I think the questioner has about background in. in Classical physics, 19th century physics, uh, because to me the, 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 the way this um, mechanism works is uh, analogous to what happens to, to, to light when it passes through a certain kind of medium, but the connection is a bit uh, subtle because it, it, the connection involves essentially a quoting uh, Einstein, who first suggested that uh, light, in other words, electromagnetic magnetic w waves, uh, should c come as packets of energy called phot photons, particles. Uh, and th th that is how I, as a physicist, make the connection between the uh, basic theory, which is about fields, not particles, and the, uh, what it does to the particles that experimentalists observe. Um, but if I, if I don't assume uh, that much knowledge of, of uh, classical optics, then uh, I suppose I, I have to say, as John Ellis of CERN does, well, imagine a snowfield. <laughs> Uh, and that that's, is an analogous to this background field in a, throughout all the universe. And this affects the way that uh, pe people uh, crossing it uh, in, in, in different ways, depending on whether they wear uh, skis or snowshoes or just boots uh, and the, the analogy is then that the, the, the people with skis are relatively unaffected and travel at high high speed. The people with snowshoes do not quite so well, and the people who just wear boots go very slowly. Uh, and that an analogy is with the, the effect on uh, some kinds of particles which continue to travel at speed of light and they're massless, and what happens to particles which are heavier. But to me, that's, well, that contains less of the physics than my more roundabout explanation. <laughs> the, the, the work which, which was done in uh, 1964 uh, led to uh, the so-called electroweak theory, the unification of weak and electromagnetic interactions in uh, of, of elementary particles, uh, which was done in, in 1967 by uh, Weinberg and Salam by taking a, a theory which uh, had the right kind of unification but, but couldn't 
couldn't produce good calculations uh, due to Glashow and, and putting it, uh, combining it with the kind of, of uh, uh, models of symmetry breaking which we had discussed in 64, that was the beginning of the standard model uh, because once that uh, theory was shown to be uh, mathematically sound that you could really calculate with it, uh, people started to uh, study other, other, other kinds of uh, so-called gauge theory in, in relation to the other forces in particle physics. And those, those uh, investigations led on to a theory of the strong force as well called quantum chromodynamics. So the work in 64 was the beginning of the return of this kind of uh, so-called quantum field theory in, in particle physics. It had previously began, been successful in the 50s, quantum, quantum electrodynamics, and then became neglected in particle physics because it didn't seem to work. And what we did was a step on the way to making it work. Well, it wasn't a pr precise moment. The, 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 the way in which uh, I came to this realization was that um, uh, I was I was trying to uh, to evade a theorem which had been proved ab about th this way of breaking symmetries uh, in 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 uh, particle physics, w which implied that there would be um, would exist uh, massless particles of 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 no without spin, and this this theorem. Uh, made the, this kind of theory uh, unacceptable because uh, such particles were not not known, uh, and uh, the, the 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 theory which in which these occurred had been um, formulated f four years earlier earlier by <coughs> Yoichiro Nambu, who got a share of the two thousand and eight prize and Jeffrey Goldstone. And it was uh, really, for me, a, a matter of realizing that the uh, theorem as proved had a flaw in it. There were, there were certain mathematical axioms which you need to prove any kind of theorem, uh, which certain kinds of, 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 of field, theory of fields didn't obey and the prime example of the kind of field which didn't obey these axioms was Maxwell's electromagnetic field uh, as, as it occurs in quantum electrodynamics. Quantum electrodynamics is a theory which doesn't involve this phenomenon of symmetry breaking, but once it was clear that there were fields of the Maxwell type which, which didn't obey the, the axioms, then the way was open to introducing these fields of this type into the theory, uh, kind of theory which Nambu had started of, of symmetry breaking. Uh, and that's essentially what, what, uh, what happened uh, to me o over a weekend um, during which uh, I gradually realized that I knew two things which had to be brought together. I don't know any, <laughs> any very obvious reason for it, it, it but it was, it, was, uh, it was related to the fact that I had read papers uh, not long before by Julian Schwinger, who was one of the people who shared the Quantum Electrodynamics Prize, um, and uh, that was 65, I think, uh, and he had a way of formulating uh, that theory, which was a little bit different from uh, what most people preferred. And it, it resulted in some equations which w were uh, explicitly uh, vi violating, apparently violating uh, the rules of uh, Einstein relativity theory. Uh, but the uh, physics was not affected by this. It was just a, a, a peculiarity of the formal mathematics. Uh, and so it was, it was my recollection of, of equations written by Julian Schwinger, 
which, which made me see that this was what had to be done. But it was a process which wasn't sudden. It, it was a, during the weekend, and I had to go back to my office on the Monday and check that I hadn't made, hadn't made a mistake about this. In my high school days, uh, I, I didn't find the physics that I was taught very interesting. Uh, I, was, I was better at mathematics and chemistry amongst the scientific subjects. And uh, I, 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 I was quite enthusiastic about chemistry, understanding the structure of matter at the molecular level. And um, gradually I, I, I came to know that there were deeper levels and that, that these, these were classified as, as physics and there was an interesting thing, there were interesting things to do, to do in theoretical physics there. One of the influences on me was probably uh, a former uh, pupil at the same school of, of about a quarter, quarter of a century earlier, uh, Paul Dirac, who was one of the founding fathers of, of quantum mechanics in the mid 1920s. And uh, I was curious about what he'd done because his name appeared frequently uh, on the uh, roll call of uh, the achievements of former pupils. <laughs> I was cu curi curious and, and that, came to, that led me to, to, to read about uh, atomic physics and quantum theory uh, before I was ever taught them. <laughs> Well, the only, the only other thing perhaps to add about the influences in, in my um, days at high school was that at the end of my time there, um, it, it, it was very soon after the end of the war and, and the uh, uh, dropping of the bombs on Japan. Uh, and I, I went to some public lectures in the University of Bristol, organised by the two professors of physics, one theoretician and one experimentalist. Uh, these were lectures for the public to tell them what, what was the background of, of, of these, these, the development of these bombs. And um, it was a great success, uh, the series of lectures. And the, the experimental physicist was Cecil Powell, who worked in experimental particle physics. In those days, it involved sending packages of photographic emulsion up into the upper atmosphere with the help of balloons. And um, he decided to give some lectures about his own work, which I then went to. And I learnt uh, from him a lot about the current state of experiment in particle physics, and that helped me to see what I wanted to do.